I'm ready to forgive them. And I literally just said that three minutes later. I'm walking on the plane and I just see Mike and I just started laughing. I was laughing because I was like, my God is so funny, dude. Like literally had to wait for me to speak it out loud. Be like, I'm over it. Like I'm ready to move on. And then he goes, prove it. <laughs> and I was like, literally. what? what? I'm like, yeah. this is insane. I'm just playing. I don't fight. I do not pray. I only go the way of Mr. Yahweh. It's not often I sit down with somebody and they say something that makes me think. This was great. I love you guys. <laughs> but you give me something to think about. My own damn way. I had a lot of fun on this interview. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna be quite honest. I, I've restarted this episode like at least nine times, and I'm starting to realize you guys are getting fed up with me. No, it's we're about okay. to kick you off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. I I've been having like this weird start to like kick off this podcast. I don't know why. I'm gonna be honest. I'll know. I'll I'll tell you why. I'll tell both of you guys why. Why? I've never got this much love from my art or my mm. work ever in my life. So now everything I ever do now, I'm just like, is that me or am I trying to be me? Because yeah. I, I looked at what didn't work out in my life and it was always me trying to be something. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in this this curve in my life where I could tell when I'm starting to fake things. And now I'm like, hey, stop doing that. You're yeah. retraining your brain yes. on how to... It's Honestly, though, that's such a good, honest thought from you because it's true. Once people start paying attention to the things that you do, you're like... Oh, wait, what are the things that I do? How do I move? And then, like, it makes you, like, overthink. Just the mm -hmm. simplest things. And you things. can't unsee it. Yeah. And so I think 10 years of, like, the, the YouTuber, the Viner of, like, what up, guys? Welcome back. And I would do that. Oh. I would do that on the days I was, like, really sad. Dude, I remember when I first started mm -hmm. working for you. <laughs> and we were doing vlogs. And I just remember holding a camera and just going, what's up, guys? Welcome back. And I was like... What's my life? Like, what am I doing? Like, I went to college, bro. Do you, like, do you remember like, the I first thing we did? Three point lighting, bro. Do you, do you remember the first thing we shot? Was it when we went down to Laguna? No. Oh, what was it? You don't love me. Oh my Stop. god! Like, you messed you up on me. one of these intros. You, you messed up my last name. Prove okay? it. Okay. Prove it. I have the footage. Oh shit! I have the footage. <laughs> Reed Khaled. Are you serious? Khaled. He edited. We podcast. just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the takes that I just go, son of a bitch. Uh, Ooh. That's so funny. The first. Oh. Wh what are you doing? Where is it? Did you hide it? Oh, because I swear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Guilty. Girls gone Bible. Where man. is it? It really changed my life. Can we circle back yes. to that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I put it away because it looked ugly and I got no cash <laughs> on it. <laughs> uh, it was empty and it, it shouldn't it, be empty. <laughs> If you guys are wondering what they're laughing about, they're, they're talking about my swear jar. And thank you guys for mm -hmm. calling me out on it. We're going to circle back to the mm -hmm. Girls Gone Bible because that's going to yeah. be something really fun to talk about. Uh, but the first time that we ever worked together, I <laughs> was doing just, I randomly record, I would mic myself oh. up and just talk to strangers. And just Reed, like, oh. Reed isn't like that type of dude to jump into this type of thing. And I literally just bought cake from a lady and I was just making her laugh behind the counter. And then afterwards, Reed goes, I don't know if this is for me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, I go, dude, if you can't buy cake with me, I don't think you can yeah, be Yeah, just like holding it. up a camera in public and just filming people. You, you wait to get their permission because you have to <laughs> yeah. get the authentic reaction. First, you can't go, hey, can I film you? Then they go, okay, and then you film because yeah. then they're like, oh, I'm on camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to get their authentic reaction and then... If they say no, then you stop filming. But it was like, I've never done anything like that before. Did you feel like a, the it, face you just it, made? Yeah, it, you felt, felt, like a it felt weird. It felt like dirty. We have a lot of things to unpack on this episode because January for season two has been un I unbelievable. It mm -hmm. has to be a miracle. Um, and this is my show. I would love to be like, it's all this hard work. <laughs> it's really not. It's like I showed up, God delivered. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that until the breath of me just exists no more. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> I like the breath of was, me exists put that no on more. A t shirt, bro. I'm Poetic. gonna be honest with you, I miss said it. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, I was like, like, follow your way out, buddy. And then like I was <laughs> able to like navigate my tongue out of there. <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, having a diligent uh, diligent tongue, which <laughs> that's that's not happening for me today. Um, by the way, a lot of you people that are new no, that no. are okay, no, sorry. Sorry, sorry. It was Sorry. Jack, and Sorry. then now something else. And I think it's because of the fasting. I'm not lying. The fasting. I started fasting last night. Last night at 10 o'clock, oh. I stopped eating. Mm -hmm. And then I haven't it's eaten. It's pretty normal. I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> not for us. Okay, not for us. <laughs> 10 p.m., dog? <laughs> yeah. People have dinner at fucking 7. Yeah, that sounds nuts. Done. But just so you guys know, we... <laughs> <laughs> we eat very late, like very late. We'll be, we'll be having like a full on, like full four course meal at like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. Oh, it's bad. Let's funny. restart it. Let's restart it. Stop. <laughs> no. Uh, so, okay. I eat until like three o'clock in the morning though. Like Bella and I, <laughs> Bella and I will literally, 
are degenerates when it comes to snacking because our our happy place and I, I I would I would love to share with the world our happy place if you don't mind okay our happy place is when we cuddle up on the couch we have a bunch of snacks laid out we might go on the patio for fresh air <laughs> we're watching friends and we're just we're just together and like I can wake up early when Belle's not around, but when I wake up and she's next to me, I'm sleeping in until noon. It's just, mm. Dude, same. Feel, it's just, you know, this is how I feel. I feel like I'm very blessed to have a relationship like ours, and and, and our love, I feel like, truly is what every guy works so hard to to receive. And so it, it's sometimes hard for me to push myself harder and do better when I, I'm like, this is all I worked for, so why am I even, you know what I mean? Like, this <laughs> yeah. is having a ride or die, having my best friend, a little hot shorty on the side. You know what hey. I'm saying? You're the Wait, shorty on the on side. The Not side. the shorty on the side. Like, that sounded like I was cheating. <laughs> that sounded, you know what I mean? Like I know what you were saying because I said A, so I knew what you were I saying. I appreciate that. Yeah. I promise you I'm not cheating anymore. <laughs> Yeah, no crap. <laughs> I have no idea I'm how buzzing. we got here. Where do I go from here? Okay. Um, oh, Girls on Bible. Yeah. Being diligent. I'm mm. so sorry to the viewers today. But also, thank you guys so much. We charted this week. To, mm -hmm. We're at number 21 on the charts. That's mm -hmm. Here's a little screenshot of that. Crazy. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Tune I love in you. in and participating. And also being so thoughtful. That's like the one thing I think that stands out to me the most is after certain episodes when they really touch people's hearts, the thoughtfulness that they put into their comments or some of these messages that, again, on Instagram, the DMs that you guys send, they're just so heartfelt. And it's, it's really cool to see. It's, it's makes us want to work harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, we worked really, really hard without this type of core audience. And now that we have it, I, I feel like we're going to be been the people that appreciate it. Yeah. We've been looking for you guys for a for while. For a long time. For a while. We've been a very long time. Every going down every mm -hmm. different path looking yeah. for them. And every we idea, found them. every little like different video yeah. type, blog type, stream type. Everything, bro. I, I have a I have a list of things that we want to like talk to them about. Uh, Tony was a cool thing. Mm -hmm. I think that was just a dream. I think the short end of it is like I got to sit with somebody that I look at as a great example of a man, mm -hmm. and being and having the privilege to sit with him and and discuss great thoughts. Uh, and not to brag, but this is something that I, I true. This is my takeaway. This is my little like, oh, this makes me happy. It wasn't the views. Wasn't the guest. It was the fact that. Usually the guest only gives one hour for a podcast. And we had like three. Yep. And I think it was truly because... His assistant kept coming out. And yeah. Trying to like, Tony, it's been two hours, Tony. Yeah. And he just kept going. Yeah, and I think... He was it, like, forget about it. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, it's because exactly we're, like we're, it's we're real. And I, I didn't come in there being like, me and you are eye to eye on things. It was like, no, I want to sit here and learn from yeah. you. And I think that brought out the real Tony because Tony just wants to lead people in the right direction. Mm. And so I was just there as a student. And, and if you haven't watched that episode, please, please, please do. We that stayed was, up till 6 a.m. editing it, so you better watch it. Let's talk about that. Dude. Your guys are true. They, w you found out what the same, you left the next day? So we should actually get into that. We found out Monday? I'll make it really quick because yeah. I feel like that's... But it's cra it's worth talking about. It, it, it was ridiculous. It is... It, it, it is it's it's again it's a miracle bro like yeah we lost all of our guests mm -hmm. all we had like not only one but we had three lined up mm -hmm. for our first all of them heavy and hitters. we had so much time to put them together we're like we got a list going yeah. we had a month to compile yeah, and come dude. back just, <laughs> yeah. just hitting the hammer and, on the head and then the devil came in and said they're all busy and i'm mm -hmm. like whoa for great reasons oh yep. <laughs> well these Can't guys are very him. very yeah. big names so anything could be thrown in their schedule and they're mm -hmm. going to be all over the place but we got them locked in it's going to be coming soon very much um, uh, but I remember this was the first, like, season two. It was my first little hurdle that God was, uh, like, testing me with, right? Because I just left season one, and now everyone's like, is this guy just like a one-hit wonder? Yep. Or is he actually going to stick around and have heartfelt conversations with really cool people? I get one call, this guy cancels. Like, no worries, God. You've prepped me with two more. <laughs> the second guy's gone. I was like, don't worry. This is where faith comes in. <laughs> Third one gone. I was like, okay, starting to feel like Job a little bit here. <laughs> but you were still super calm. I said, you're like, it's okay. You know what? We'll do another yeah. just alone episode. Our first one we did back did good. You know, it'll be good. And you were super. I, I cool was I was ready to go wherever God wanted to take it. Mm -hmm. I am so done good. arguing with him, right? Yep. So the hurdles started coming my way. And I'm like in this confidence stage, like, all right, devil, let's see what you got. And it just kept taking things away. And I was like, who cares, bro? I don't care. I mean, like, look what God did for me in like half a year with my podcast. I'm not going to sit here and doubt him. Mm -hmm. and and we're sitting here with Davidge we're going over all these plans and Davidge is like kind of apologetic because he feels bad that these guests are leaving mm -hmm. but also trying to like 
uh, like, you know, give me some motivation. Like, don't worry, bro. Like, people still, like, they're tuning in. Like, they're... they're it was a tough position, though. Yeah. Because we thought we were going to have to do two uh, two of these back-to-back, two boys and bell yeah. only. It was the uh, Andrew Tate debrief. We thought we were going to have to do another boys and bell only, which would have been fine. But it was like, we wanted to come back and give them a sick guest first. Yeah, just show them, like, yo, we're here. We're ready to play this game. Yes. And, uh, and Reed is sitting right here. Davidj is, like, propped up right here on a phone. And I look at both of them. I go, dude, we're going to get Tony Robbins. Now, mind you, we don't even have him on the roster. We haven't talked to his team. We haven't talked to anything. And I wasn't talking about the first guest back. I thought it was going to be the finale. Like, oh, we're going to yeah. close it with a good Tony Robbins episode. And I just, I was like, I'm going to speak that into existence. Now, I think this is what happened. And I could be completely wrong. But I think, you know, I don't know if it was God that tested me or the devil that tried to unencourage me. But... Basically, in front of me, there was a road where I have no guests. Everybody in the world waiting to see what's going on. I have a lot of people that are trying to back this show or a lot of people that want to buy this show. There's a lot of people that are like, what is he going to do next, right? What is he going to do from every direction? And so I stood there with confidence. And I was like, if it's going to be a solo one, my God's going to prepare me. It's going to be great. And that day, somebody texts me, Stanage, Albert Stanage. And he sends me a screenshot of... Uh, Tony Robbins email and he goes hey is this from Tony Robbins or is this like <clears throat> like a fake email and in my mind I'm like there's no way this is a perfect organic way for me to reach out to his team mm-hmm. and be like by the way I don't know if you've been watching the podcast but like we're doing pretty good we'd love to have Tony on <laughs> and so I just shot a, a a message and I was like yo like I would love uh I would love to to have Tony on that'll be if, if you if you would have me like I would love to have him on my show like I look up to him like I would love to have that conversation. Don't get a response back yet. And I'm like, ooh, push too hard, did I? Later that night, I'm riding my scooter to the mailbox, and I get a voice note. And I'm like, please be Tony. Please be Tony. <laughs> Click it. It's Tony. I'm like, yes. And he basically just says, hey, I've been watching what you're doing. I saw what happened with you in your past. I'm very proud of how you dealt with it. Uh, I heard that you want me on your show. Let's make this happen. Now, I've heard a lot of A-star people tell me, like, let's make this happen. And it's like, yeah. what are you doing in 2068? And I'm like, dude, like, I got shit to do today, you know? <laughs> yeah. So in my mind, I was like, okay. He's like, I'm going to have my team reach out. And when he, said, when you, when he usually says, I'm going to have my team reach out, it's like a polite way of like, well, we're going to get to you. Not even 30 seconds later, hey, it's Tony team. We'd like to get this all set up. Are you, are you available in Texas in two days? And I'm like... It was Saturday night. We needed something to upload for Thursday. So in my mind, I go... <clears throat> well, this is like Monday at this point, no? We flew out Tuesday. Out? We flew out Tuesday. Yeah. You found out Monday? We found out Sunday. Found we out. found yeah. out like a day before we had to travel. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I know, because you called me and you were like, dude, good news, bad news. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> we found out that Same, we have Tony yeah. Robbins. Bad news, we literally have to leave tomorrow. And I'm like... Oh. And my dad was in town visiting and he hadn't been here in like seven years and he was leaving in like four days and I was like, I... I can't leave. And, There's a right decision. And there were so there much things sure. going yeah. on. Yeah. So I stayed. So I couldn't make it to the Tony Robbins episode. Low key. But, I don't even think you would have been able to get a word. And I was just saying that every time <laughs> yeah. you. What, what about this? Like, <laughs> I would have been like this. Just like. <laughs> Because yes. that's how I was when I would listen to it. Like, I know we're veer off, but like, truly, because I wasn't there. So I'm just listening to it as an audience member. And I was just literally listening in the car. And I was like, damn. I would like go back. I'm like, what was that again? Like, just all. It was just such a good interview and like all the info and the wisdom that was in it was just mm-hmm. so good. I'm sorry. Okay, go on. No, thank you for, for watching, <laughs> listening and nice. subscribing. Uh, <laughs> and I, so basically we, we head out there and, and like, I'm just excited. I'm super nervous. We go up to do the show. Mm-hmm. We set up. We, we crush three hours. Mm-hmm. Which then, was supposed to start at, which was supposed to wrap at around 8 p.m. Wrapped at like 11. <laughs> yeah, we dude, were supposed no, to no, upload the next day at noon. So Reed's packing up everything like a G, just handling it all by himself. I'm standing out in the patio of this beautiful like penthouse where he's staying. Mm-hmm. And I, I, we just did an interview and I'm just like, I, I want to write a book. I've always wanted to write a book. Now, how I do my life is kind of like, I, I find mentors. 
people to learn and absorb from. I don't understand why people always want to do things their own. I love mentorship. Mm -hmm. I grew up in martial arts, so we had a sensei. He would teach us his ways, and then you could learn from his art form, and then you could grow on. And you, it's kind of like art, right? It's you, a cheat code, dude. It's just just pick. Uh, uh, my dad used to always tell me, "Be a sponge. Walk into the room, absorb." So mm -hmm. I'm sitting out there with Tony, and I and I thought it was just gonna be really quick, like, "Hey, like, you know, I always wanted to write a book. Like, what are your?" And he goes, "This is how I do it." And he sits back. I'm not gonna mention it to you guys because it's between us. You're gonna gatekeep <laughs> the cheat code. Unbelievably, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Maybe maybe I'll write it in my book when I'm an old man. I'm like, this is what Tony told me. You're gonna write a book about Tony <laughs> yeah, Robbins yeah, yeah, teaching yeah, you to write a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart. Yeah. And uh, and so he he basically showed me his formula on how to write, and I'm excited to like get started on that. And so um, uh, we finish up that episode. We come back. We shoot Girls Gone Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, Girls Gone Bible was like, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. Uh, Seriously, <laughs> Girls Gone Bible was uh, was beautiful, bro. Like it was so beautiful. It, it, it did better than the Tony Robbins episode. Like, I, <laughs> like it, we we've really got we've tapped into an audience. Yeah. I, I, I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but like you gotta understand, I've been in the game for like ten years, and I never really f I felt like I'd hand me down uh, audience. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, and this is just being realistic, <laughs> dude. Like, I thought I was like, hey, what's Logan not doing right now? We'll see what his friends are doing. You know what I mean? So it's like a yeah. true feeling. And that it I felt had. like we had to bend over backwards to get them to watch. Like we need to the like biggest it. clickbait. Oh, yeah, and, and now we're watching like us just having a conversation. And, the like, Jake people... Paul episode was just called a different side of Jake Paul. <laughs> yeah, dude. Crushed. And by the way, do, hey, hey, and this is I'm not I'm not sitting here trying to brag, but like truly, just check it out from my perspective, right? You get kicked off of a show, <laughs> right? You get kicked off a show, and a year later they're using you for clickbait when they were saying that you're not getting views. What's up, bro? Come on, dude. what's up, bro? I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not <laughs> taking the credit. Obviously, God is helping me out with everything. But it was kind of cool, bro. I'm having all my text messages, like text messages from my family, my friends, Patrick, but David. David yeah. Oh my God, that whole thing. Let's mm -hmm. just put it this way, bro. There's two types of men in the world, right? The men that always want more, and the man that is completely grateful for the situation he's have now. And I think truly, truly, and I, and I mean this. I I, I wrote it right here. Uh, Everything that's happening right now, from Patrick Bid David speaking about me being an interviewer, uh, to impulsive audiences uh, defending me, to uh, old uh, friends that I dislike, but now we're rekindling and we're we're building something beautiful. Like God put me in a place to have everything that heart, my heart desire, everything my heart desires. I didn't want any enemies. The people that I grew up with on the show, I don't want to look at them as people that I, I don't like. Like these are my friends, and I want to be friends with them one day, God willing. And like I just I want to be able to stand as a righteous man in front of God and in front of the world. That's my dream. And I got everything my heart desires and I'm sitting there and I'm like, how do I explain for somebody to like, to walk how I walked to get what, you know, everybody has that thing in their heart, right? Everybody has that like, the thing that they see in their head, but the devil lies to them and says that they can't achieve it. Mm -hmm. Or or there's something here, but they're they're wondering, like, God, I'm doing everything, but why are you not blessing this? Like, I, I feel it in my heart mm -hmm. this is meant for me. Yeah. And I felt like that for 10 years, bro. 10 years I'm here and I'm I'm trying and I'm doing everything and then and also in the place where things happen overnight overnight you're, you're, and by the way dude I'm on the, the biggest place. podcast show yes. uh, when they do the uh, the crossovers for the show like uh, uh, KSI's team and the uh, the impulsive thing everybody in the comments section is like oh this guy's really funny but my career is just not growing it's not moving I, I went from celebrating my two, fo two million followers four years ago and then I'm looking at it now I have 1.7 I lost 300,000 <laughs> being on a big show and like yeah. it's like it's like I had all the tools all the uh, uh, opportunity all everything and nothing was working out for me bro nothing was working out for me and I think and this is just from my perspective on my life I think when God decided to give me everything that I was working for was when I showed him what my heart desires will never be desired more than my God mm. So if there's a God in heaven looking at me and I'm like worshiping vanity and like my, like a big house or a big career or fame or... I'm stuck at 1.6 million subscribers. I'm, stu I'm stuck at 1.6. <laughs> I'm always wanting more. Yeah, yeah. God's like, well, from my point of view, you're just worshiping dirt because mm. all of this is going to become it dirt. It doesn't even actually even exist. You're just looking at a number on a screen. It doesn't even... It's not even tangible. It's it will, And people will forget about it. I'm mm -hmm. worshiping things that are they're meaningless. Yeah. Okay. So then... Every door opens, every opportunity happens when I'm just, my head is concentrated on Christ. And you could tell, I'm not just speaking this, you could see through my podcast experience of how much more I'm talking about, how, how much more passion I'm, as my friends, you could see that I went from talking about it 80% of the day to like 100, I don't even care anymore, like I'll talk about it all yeah. I want. 
And well, it was also, it was so part of your personal life, but not part of your like public life. But that's mm-hmm. a coward's move. If it's, if it's everything that you should be, why is all these other influencers or all these other people showing their full recklessness, mm-hmm. but you don't want to show your full righteousness. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I was like, you know what, God, I just want to be with my wife and my kids and just have enough to pay my bills and just worship you and just be where you want me to be. Take my feet where you want them. And that's when God's like, okay, now I could work with this guy because he humbled himself. And I said, okay, now this is the craziest part. Everything came. And then it reminds me of the Bible verse, seek first the kingdom and the rest shall follow. But here's the best part. I got every opportunity to make the money. I got every opportunity to have these guests. I have every opportunity to turn on this camera and touch a lot of people's hearts where if you're a creator, that's what you want. You want to be able to influence and do things in in a way that you find it right in your heart. All of this now, meaningless. Now I look at my God and I go, God, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do? My prayers were like, God, I need this. God, I want that. God, why is everybody doing this to me? God, this, God, that, God, that, God, that. And through this circumstance that he put me through, from leaving a show to to having a fallout, to starting from scratch, he changed my heart. Mm -hmm. It's no longer, God, what could you do for me? It's, God, what do you want me to do while I'm here? What can I do for you? Not that he needs me to do anything. But if he was going to give me blessings, he would give it to me when I could handle it. And how I was behaving, how my actions were, how I treated my loved ones, my friends. Now, mind you, I wasn't a bad person, but it could be better. And if you want better things in life, you got to be better. You got to move with the intent of being better than you were yesterday, not being complacent and like, oh, I'm good enough to have that. It was a selfish mindset. I was very, very selfish. And in fact, like I looked at the traits of like my, my old co-hosts and I'd be upset with them. But after the journey of God working on my heart, I realized I was only upset with them because I do the same things. Mm -hmm. I'm egotistical. I worship vanity, even though I didn't think I worship vanity. There was so much more to my life that God was like, how about this? Before I give you everything, let me work on you a little bit. Let me show you why you should treat your enemies with respect, why you should, instead of asking me for more, which I've blessed you with so much, why are you not asking me how you could help your neighbors get to where they need to be? And all of a sudden now I'm doing things for my neighbors and I'm serving left and right. And I found true happiness in this, that when God is blessing me with more, I'm still at like, you don't need to do anymore. Like I'm, I I don't need a big house. I don't need the, the cars. I don't need, uh, People running up to me telling me everything because I found so much joy and happiness serving other people around me and most importantly serving my God that everything else is just is it's a bonus. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's just a bonus. And and I think that's when God is going to give you all that, because in my mind, I picture him as a father. Right. And the, the, the example that I could use is this. Your dad most likely won't be giving you a car if he knows you're going to drive far away from him. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Like he wants to have that relationship with you, Mm. but he would definitely give you that car when he knows that you'll drive and come right back to him or ask him, hey, what can I do for you with this car? Like, it's hard for me to explain this and it might sound cheesy. Your motivation behind your, like changed before your motivation was, well, if I do this, then I'll get this. But then your motivation changed and you said, no, well, I'm doing this because I want to and because I love you. Perfect example. Thank you. Uh, If you're a Christian, and you're asking for a great relationship with God, and then at the same time, you're asking for your career to do better, but you're not a good person, God's not gonna bless you because you're going to be more of a bad person. People that have more money have more access. So technically, if you haven't gotten to where you think you deserve to be, you might be an egomaniac, bro, and you need to humble yourself. And that might, you might be like, no, bro, what are you talking about? It's not, I didn't think that. I would look at the people that I would look down on and be like, look how they treat me, or look at it, and I would look down, I would look down. My mental state was down, down, down. And God goes, well, look how you're speaking about them. If you truly felt like they were beneath you, wouldn't you want to go like this and bring them up? Because I don't know if you noticed this, but my POV is looking down at you. It was a defense mechanism. It's because mm-hmm. you were in pain. That's how you, that's how you coped with it. But does that give you an excuse? Not at all. Okay. Actually, you know what's so funny? I wrote this down. Um, it, it's, it's like we immediately went into the biblical round. That was supposed to be like in the, <laughs> the ending. So I, I said all of this just to, just kind of just for the Christian man, the man who loves God. Um, if you feel like there's something in your heart that you know, bro, you, you can't even explain it to somebody, but you know this is where I'm supposed to be. 
uh, and you're not there, you got to bring it to God and say, hey, like, take my feet where you want them to be. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like I'm just walking in the wrong direction. And that's how I was. Like, I was so, I thought I had to work for it. For you God were on to a hamster wheel. I thought I had to. I thought it was lazy. I, if I don't work for this, then then uh, uh, then God wouldn't bless me because I'm lazy. But that's not true. You, you, can, you can, Obviously, you have to work for it. But you have to show faith. You have to. If you don't have faith, then you're going to start acting out of emotions that you shouldn't be leading like a lot of business stuff went wrong i okay if i would have gone back in time with impulsive just impulsive we'll just bring up impulsive i would have behaved way differently Mm. because i would have known that my friends you know they're treating me a certain way but i know that they love me there's love there so instead of putting my ego but how dare they talk to me like this and letting comments get to me or or letting family members saying like you know what they shouldn't talk i let my emotions dictate the door. Now, mind you, that was a blessing because God put me in a position that I'm, I'm a little bit wiser and I, and, I, and I should be grateful for that to happen. But I can't not neglect that there was a lot of mistakes on my part. I led with emotion a lot. And if you're a man with faith, you got to learn how to holster your anger. You got to learn how to holster your emotions of fear because the time where God's supposed to do his job if you interfere with it, with your emotions, you're, you're only hurting yourself mm-hmm. because you're not trusting your creator to do his part. And it's, you know, like I'll give, you know, they, you sow what you reap, right? But remember the weather, you can't control the weather. You can't control the dirt. You can't control the water. You can't control the soil. There's so much that depends on the Lord that you have to have faith. And uh, so I just want to hop on here because a lot of people have been, um, this is the most compliments I've ever had in my life. And, and I called every single one of you personally. And I said, if my head gets big, humble me. Because I know what it's like to see somebody gassed up every day from the moment you wake up to you go to bed of, man, you're so cool, bro. You're so knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. You're so this. You're, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just expressing vividly what I went through. I'm not smarter than you. I just know how to talk better than you. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make me smarter than you. That makes me know how to express better than you. And I need to, uh, uh, I think the next chapter of my life is keeping myself humble, like making sure that I don't, and this is not for me taking shots at anybody, but every great falls when his ego gets too big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to mention who we're talking about. It's not Logan. Everybody thinks I'm always talking about Logan. But you could go look at people that I look up to in the stand-up world or podcasting world, and they're getting bad reps because of their ego or, or stuff like that. And it's just, it's... God giveth and he'll easily taketh. And yeah. so I just want to uh, tell you guys I'm working on myself. Every day I'm working on myself. And the one thing that I've been failing that I've been working on myself is swearing. Um, and I want to circle back to the Girls Gone Bible. The Girls Gone Bible, they called me out, bro. They had that, they had that like fire behind them. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I really, really appreciate their company, bro. It was really nice. Mm-hmm. But they asked me, they go, um, what's up with your swearing? And I didn't say it at the time. Because I was trying to like put it into words, but then I read a comment and I was like, oh, that's, well, that's what I meant. Mm-hmm. There's a difference in my heart versus cursing and, and, and cussing. Mm-hmm. Like I could cuss to give flavor to a, a, a conversation. And that's how me and my family grew up. Very Italian style. Like, well, what the F? You know, like it was just aren't like they, just things we did. Aren't they from Iraq? Yeah. What the f? <laughs> uh, <laughs> racism. Um, and, uh, and so I started, um, I tried to start, I even, at Bell saw I grabbed a band and I did it so many times, the band broke. And I was like, wow, dude, like I really do swear a lot. And the reason why I'm taking this seriously is because I'm just trying to work on discipline. This year is the year of discipline, right? Amen. Structure, same. discipline. And I feel like I find my happiness when I give myself structure. We're made to have structure and like obedience. It's just, it's just mm-hmm. how I feel like I'm made at least, right? Yeah. Um, and once I realized how much I swear after trying not to swear, I was like, oh, you're a hooligan. You can't unsee it. <laughs> you're no. a hooligan, bro. I'm a hooligan. No, I'm but, literally a hooligan. I mean, it's because it, it comes from habit. And when you do it for so much time, you know what I mean, of your life, and then it becomes a habit in like, oh, well, it makes people laugh. And it's easy to, to just use it in your speech, you know? So, But I, I thought that it was beautiful and such a great example of Angela and Ariel to be able to you know, bring that up to you because it's not like 
you know, we're becoming friends with them now, but I, this was our first time meeting with them in person. And, you know, it could feel very awkward to have to call out your friends on something that you think that they're doing wrong or something that you feel like, I know this would better them if they knew this, but oh, I don't want them to be angry with me and make it awkward. Mm. But she was able to have confidence like in her Lord and be like, no, you know what? Like this is in my heart and I feel like I should rebuke him on this. And so you know, because it's coming from a place of love and it's coming from God, then like he shouldn't take it in any bad way. And she leaned on that and she was able to call you out on that and have an honest conversation with you. And I just think that that was such a beautiful example for for people to see and for women to see that like it's OK to to stand on what you believe on. As long as you're coming from a place of love and betterment, then there isn't anything that you can't talk about with somebody if it's for them being better. And then on the other side, for you, it showed such a beautiful example of a man and a leader to be able to listen to what somebody is saying to him without being, you know, like, oh, well, what do you mean? You're correcting me. And you put you weren't your pride wasn't in the way. And you're able to go, you know what? You're right. Like, I am wrong. I do. I do do that. And that is wrong. And then you said, OK, and I will change it. And so to be able to make that decision right there and then in that moment and to realize that you're wrong in a situation, it's not a easy thing to do. I thought I've always wanted to. I just never had the care to. Because All it takes is a couple words at the right time. And I, was, I just saw two girls that really loved God and they were just like, hey, what's up with this? And like, I know that wasn't for no reason. And I truly feel that if you're Christ-like, God has beautiful moments where he uses other people to check you. And I, I pray for that every day. I go, God, how can I be better? So when I'm sitting with two people that are, are put together and they're, and they're classy and they have this type of structure in their life and they say, hey, what's up with this? There's two things a man could do. He could either cower and use his emotions and be like, nah, you don't know. Or you could just be like, got it. I'm going to work on it. And it's harder to do that. But it's not hard if you pray for it. Like, I, I think I was only ready to hear that because I'm ready to work with God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how it is with this world is a lot of people could see God because they want to see God and they want to get worked on and they want to be obedient. And there's some people are like, I like moving in my pace and my time and my thing. Mm -hmm. But everything I've ever had in my life was based off of another human giving me something amazing or God opening up an opportunity. So it's stupid for me to like turn down. Mm -hmm criticism now mind you there's times i hear criticism when people are like don't talk about god so much blah 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 and i'm like eh, that's my passion like, okay. you want to be telling an artist it doesn't mean everything is <laughs> somebody's telling you is yeah. right you know you don't have to take everything that somebody says but yeah you, know? you you'll know when you should or shouldn't take it speaking of like uh, uh god using a perfect time on the way to jake's uh podcast i bumped into mike and i know you guys already heard this on uh, on impulsive but mm -hmm. uh mm. i bumped into mike and on a plane yeah hilarious. at lax Hilarious. But, dude, what did I say before we got on that plane? What did I say? You don't remember? I don't remember. Oh, I'll say you it. You know my memory. I'll say it. And if I'm lying, call me out on it. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're sitting on the plane and we're, we're again, we're just kind of like looking at our calendar and just praising God and just being like, this is crazy. I can't believe it. And then I turn to him and I go, I don't think I have any more anger in my heart. Mm, yeah. I go, I don't have any more anger in my heart, man. I think God had to put me in that place and... And uh, if God wants me to uh, move on, then I'll move on. But I think moving forward, I, I, I'm just going to speak peacefully. I'm not going to be angry. I, I'm ready to forgive them. And I literally just said that. Like, I'm ready to forgive them and just move on. Like, just Which you've gone through a rainbow of emotions of <laughs> since dealing with that split. Like I'd forgive and then people would bring up things and then I'd remember and I get angry. There's times I've seen you pacing and be like, bro, when I see them, bro, it's <laughs> on sight. <laughs> like, like I swear to you, you had like fire in your I, eyes. I definitely like, was in a, in a, in a, in a, in a very hurt and scared. And it place. would come and go. And it's just yeah. the pain. Like it's, it's, a and I think, up, and you know what it is? It's like, I think anybody would have that with somebody that they truly, of, know, course. Yeah, of course, right? Of course. So, and so <laughs> it's so funny. Cause <laughs> I, so I, I literally just go, yeah, I'm over it, bro. Like in my heart, I, I really am. I'm just, I'm ready to move on. Three minutes later, I'm walking on the plane and I just see Mike and Mike saw me. And even in his podcast, he said, I just started laughing. I was laughing because I was like, my God is so funny, dude. Like literally had to wait for me to speak it out loud. Be like, I'm over it. Like I'm ready to move on. And then he goes, Prove it. <laughs> and I was like, what? what? Like, yeah. this is insane. So, by the way, I don't know if you guys ever, like, fly. You don't usually bump into people. 
especially like people odds, like, like on a random plane going yeah. to Florida. Like how you know? And I'm not gonna lie. Out of all the people that got underneath my skin, Mike was the most. Mike was like, I hated Mike, and I and and it's very hard for me to use the word hate. Um, <laughs> and like, and we have to, we 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 did set a time aside to talk, but. But it was always Mike that I thought, God forbid, I would swing. Like, I'm not lying. I don't, I don't think I'd ever swing on Logan because, like, not that, like, he's a fighter and I'm, like, trying to get... The thing about me is, like, I, I don't care about winning the fight. I just want to hit you. Like, you know, you can beat my ass, but I'm going to get one good shot on you, if anything, right? And so I found it really funny that Mike was the first one that I saw. Yeah. And when I saw Mike, it's so... It, it was so funny how it worked. I looked at him. I knew what God was doing with me. <laughs> and all I kept seeing when I looked at him in his eyes was all our fun moments that we had together. Mm. And I just, I, we, I just looked at him and I just started dying of laughter. Was, they're both, I was just behind him and they're both just laughing. They Mike each looked other. stressed. <laughs> I was, just, his face was red. Yeah, and he they're looked hard, they hug and then they're just like, ha, 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 ha. they're just Dude, laughing. I, was, I made my way, he was, he was at the front of the plane. I made my way past him and I didn't even see him. And I was mm. sitting in my seat and uh, I was ahead of you guys. You guys were together. Um, and you were stopped up there, and I was like, oh, what's it doing? And then I look, and you're like, Reed, it's Mike. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's not Mike Malak, because <laughs> he's laughing, and Joe just smiling, like, yeah. what other mics are there? And then he's like, you're like, Mike Malak. And I was like, from Love Sack. <laughs> like, and we're good? Like, everything's okay? And then you come back, and you're just like, you just look like you're daydreaming. You're like, you just looked really proud of yourself. You know, it, it wasn't that I was proud of myself. I was so excited of what God did. This is what God did. Right. God said, be quiet, walk with love and I'll take care of it. Yeah. And deep down, deep, deep down, what I wanted was, you know, a good career uh, for me to stand and provide for my family. But also I, I don't want any enemies. I don't want enemies, bro. Like, especially from people that I truly looked at and I said, I loved you and I meant it. Mm. So when I, when I watched this happen <laughs> and I was like, wow, my God not only gave me a career where the whole world is like, yeah, he doesn't need impulsive. He's good on his own. But then God goes, hey, do you want your friends back? Do you want to start building that? Because I will give you everything you need. As long as you walk diligently in obedience, I'll give you everything you need. And so when I sat there and I was like, okay, cool. He's giving me an opportunity to, uh, to like really make this work. Right. Yeah. And do you know, what's really funny is that he was making me laugh a lot, bro. You were giggling. You texting. were, you guys were texting each other and you were giggling. I even text. I go, you, Hey, <laughs> stop making me laugh this much, bro. Yeah. And I had to unblock him yeah. because on the way back, he goes, I'm going to text you. I was like, bro, I have you blocked on everything. And he goes, could you do something about that? <laughs> and I was like, all right. And but, so like I unblocked bro, him. Bro, you were like giggling to yourself and you're texting and you're like, I still don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> that literally that so word for funny. Word. <laughs> Well, it's because I think, you know what it is, bro? And, and I, I'll, I'm going to put myself out there because this is a subject that people were talking about, right? And if we're going to talk about forgiveness, it's regardless of how you feel, regardless of how you feel, it's not, you're not doing it for them. You're not doing it for you as much as they say that. You're doing it because God told you to. He said, forgive your neighbors. Forget about it. And, and, and to, to just peel it back in different layers the truth is, bro, everybody got something going on, bro. They, the, the, the truth is the person that's probably hurting you is hurting probably more inside than you even know. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to kind of pick up my pride and throw it away and say, okay, like you've given me everything. I didn't deserve to be in the place that I'm in. So if you want me to like make this right or make, be a good human being, like to the people that I love that if you're not, here's the thing. If you can't forgive, if you can't forgive your friends, how are you ever going to get to a place to forgive your enemies? Do you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. So. We get off the plane and I uh, I see Mike and uh, and uh, he just he's just making me laugh, bro. And I'm sitting here and I just straight up tell him, I go, bro, I'm not the same guy that you met. Like I'm not. I'm very very different now. I'm very confident. I'm not scared. I'm not lost. You don't need anybody's approval. I don't need or anybody, dude. Like yeah. I, I God made it very clear. It's me and him. And I, I and he literally looked at me. He goes, No, no, we know that and we could see that. And when he said that, I was like, man, there's really nothing my God can't do, bro. Mm. Like, really, there's nothing he can't do. Don't you feel like the last few years has been, like, God planting seeds? And I, this is, I mean, this is what, how I feel this year is. This year is, like, blooming flowers. Like, yeah. I feel like yeah. this year is just about... So true, dude. Right? So it's true. Like, reaping season. Yeah, like, a blooming in so many areas. I mean, obviously, for you and, like, even, like, like, things I've noticed in my life and even things with me, like, friendships, certain friendships, like, girls that I was friends with before and now friends again or new ones and things like that. Just, like, so many... It's just the year of blossom. Yeah. I love that. It is. I feel that. Right? I, yeah. I... <sighs> 
it really is incredible what your emotions could do to your life. Mm -hmm. They dictate everything. They dictate mm -hmm. everything, dude. Like, everything, though. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's so funny because it's just our emotions. It's just how we feel. Like, that's what I think it's so it, funny. It's everything. It is man. everything. It dictates, like, how you react with your decisions that you make, the people that you surround yourselves with. But it, it's just so simple. It's just how we feel. It's just our feelings. I, I think if anybody had to take anything away from what I say, but, uh, like, Obviously, underneath, follow God with all your heart. That's that will always be my number one thing for people. But, dude, like forgiving somebody is so healthy for your heart, dude. Like, sure. it's so, like, freeing. And also, it's like, when I sat back, like, if we're going to talk about Logan or Mike, the separation from me looking at them of what they've done to me, truly, and I'm putting myself out here. Versus the separation of how many times I probably break God's heart mm. every day and still count on him. I think at some point God's going to be like, how could you not forgive somebody when you ask me for forgiveness every day, bro? Mm. 100%. Every day. You, are, you guys are the same thing. You guys are just a pillow of dirt to me. But one of you guys think you're righteous dirt. <laughs> you're not righteous dirt. You're just a dirty little boy who thinks he got it figured out. Mm. So if you really want to figure it out, why don't you move in the direction that I want you to move? And that was, uh, this was a lot bigger of a conversation than I thought it would be. Yeah. But I'm just pouring out my heart right now. 100%. Like, this as is you a should. good one. I don't know. It's <laughs> such a good one because, you know, like having like hate or dislike or a, a, a thing that you hold against somebody, that is so much of your time and your energy that you're just constantly reopening that wound, getting upset about things because you're still upset with that person. You're worried about, oh, when I see them, how am I going to act when I see them? That's just so much stress and anxiety on your life. And so if you're able to let that go and, yeah, forgive it, even though, like, it doesn't make what maybe they did to you is right but if you can let go of it for yourself i almost choked up when i saw jake's opening of uh the podcast that he dude had. that was that I, I i skipped through it because i was getting like a, like i literally got choked up a little and i like just like i can't I watch that right now <laughs> is it because you know what it is bro like i think it's very easy to forget where you're from and so many different levels. i think anybody in my shoes with any type of common sense would have been like nah i'm out i don't ever want to look back at that but they're just throwing away such awesome memories, bro. Like, such awesome memories. Like, mm -hmm. uh, when Jake was bringing up all those things between us, my heart was hurting because I was like, damn, I really hope I could have these conversations with Logan again. And not because I, I need him. I think you will. Or do anything. I, I, I think I've proven that I don't need anybody now, right? Mm -hmm. But, man, it would be really cool to be able to share excitement with somebody that I truly felt really wanted me to succeed. In the grand scheme of things, you guys have been friends for ten eight, years. Ten years. Yeah. It's been a year of this. And yeah. it's been I know people just see clickbaits and titles and it's like, okay, I'm over it. But it's been like a a constant part of your life of something that you're dealing with. And I think talking about blooming and it feeling like spring, but I feel like it's coming to an end at least and, and by the way the only reason i'm bringing this up because i'm i was very quiet about this yes um except for on the howie mandel thing which was a very big learning lesson because people <laughs> were just like stop talking about this and i'm like bro, this is the this only is the time, time i've ever I... brought it up that <laughs> was so funny. i was so insecure after saying that. i was like jesus i'm never talking about this again uh it's because the patrick but david episode bro so listen mm -hmm. okay so this is even crazier on the plane mike goes oh i'm gonna go uh to patrick but david's episode and i was like cool Awesome. Uh, I'm driving home from, I'm going to be quite honest. I was serving at the time, which is really. Serving time? I was serving time. I was behind bars. You were in no. jail. I, I was serving. What did we miss? It was, it was something that I was doing um, between me and God. And I put all of my personal and work away. And I was just there being there because I felt like God wanted me to be there. And on the way home, I was just like, man, this is the best feeling. Like, you know, like, thank you for giving me the wisdom to do this. Like, and I'm just driving home and my mom and dad are blowing up my phone. So I kind of got scared. I was like, oh, I got to answer this. Like, make sure they're okay. 
So I asked them, Are you guys good? They're like, Patrick Bet David. Patrick Bet David. And my heart dropped. I go, What? What happened? She goes, Did you see how he lit Mike up? And I was like, <laughs> Lit Mike up? And she goes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yo, man, he's really got your back, man. You better, my dad, you better call him and you say thank you. I was, no. like, I was like, Wait, what are you guys talking about? They're like, They're on the podcast right now and he's speaking such good things about you. And I'm like, Wait, like, in what way? So I wanted to watch it on the way home, but I was like, no, 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 I want to watch this with Bell. So I, I called Bell. I was like, Bell, Patrick's saying some stuff about me. And Mike brought up the fact that me and Logan were talking and all that stuff. I was keeping it behind closed doors for now. Hmm. But he brought it up and, and uh, it, we weren't, we're not chatting like on an everyday level. It was just kind of like, I think what we're both kind of at, we're kind of like, you're upset with me, I'm upset with you, but like, I feel like we could figure this out mm -hmm. if we sit down and talk about it or not, honestly. It was sweet. He reached out care. for... I don't care. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he reached out for our engagement, which I thought was sweet. He kind of put everything aside so he could text, you know, which was nice. And So, yeah, that's the... that's the. Uh, I, and to be honest, when they were talking about an impulsive, I was like, oh, I get to talk about it now. Like, and I was like, I was just excited. To like, I just feel... I don't know, man. I just feel like it, it's... It's... I'm grateful. I'm just... I'm in a grateful spot right now. And... Mm. Uh, and thank you to everybody who's listening. And I, and I hope this episode wasn't boring. Like, I, I know this is like a recap. For They always get mad at me because I always feel like I'm boring you guys when I'm like recapping. I don't know why. I just feel like, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I, it's so weird now that I have a platform, I no longer even want to talk about myself. Like, I, I'd rather talk about things I'm working on myself. I like, had an idea for these Boys and Bell Only where people that are watching could leave comments yeah. or something um, about if you have any questions or anything in at the ends of these episodes, we could go to a couple from the last episode and bring I love them up. That. I don't, whether it's just yeah. as a subject of, it could be biblical, it could be just a question about your past. I it love could that. be literally anything. anything. That would be really cool. I really, and we could really just go through that. the comment section and pick a couple out. So around this time, we'll do it next time. Around and this I time, we'll prep. just have a couple it. different things. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's better than a call in because I feel like at a call in, it'll be like, kind of like I have to think on the spot. Mm -hmm. But if I read a comment and I could sit with it, pray about it. Yes. I'd be like, okay, cool. Let me figure out a good way to speak about this. Sure. Um, no, that would be really fun. That'd it would be a be great fun. way to like. Because we're always trying to think about, okay, what are we yeah. going to bring to this episode? I have a couple subjects, but that way we can put it in their corner and be like, what do you guys want us to talk about? Mm. Because when it's a guest, it's you want to give them the, the attention and respect. Mm. But here it's like, we can mold into many different forms. Yeah. I want this. The, the, I, I, well said, huh? Dude, well you should said. start a podcast. I want to. <laughs> I want this podcast to be very like hard and fun, right? Like we, we can laugh and I want to treat it like my family. One, we would never go to bed angry ever. My mother and my father never let me go to bed angry. I don't care if we're up until five o'clock in the morning and we have school in two hours. My mom would make us sit at the table and discuss, get it all out on the table, give each other hugs, wrap it up. And so I want that raw, like I'm just every week I'm going to come, I'm going to put my heart on the table. I'm scared now because I've been putting my heart on the table and people have been like really excited about that. I'm just scared that one day I'm going to put my heart on the table and people are going to be like, ooh, I don't like that. Then and it's that's too bad scary. if they don't like it. It gets scary because I'm, 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 I'm getting used to the like, hey, nice. Yeah. I like that. And like I'm scared that one day I'm going to be vulnerable and people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Not me. Um, and that must be a really scary feeling. But then I think that's when you have to lean on your faith even more and be like, well, this is what I believe and this is my heart and well done. that's okay. <coughs> you know? uh, and can I just say that since we were talking about the trips for podcasts, I love going on trips with you guys. Like it's oh, the best. It's like, so much fun. We have the best time and we, we all stay in a hotel room like all together, you know, and Georgie and I are in one bed and Reed has his other bed and uh -huh. we just like, we stay up, we go and get snacks and we so watch little wholesome. things together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, and the Patrick B. David episode, Mike was like, it was awkward because I'm in first class and <gasps> Bro, oh, no. that was weird. That was, so <laughs> that was weird. weird. First of all, first of all, okay. I'm very comfortable where I'm at, but the reason... Speak for yourself. I'm six feet tall, bro. I'm you got to get us up there. <laughs> my I, my legs are touching the seat what, in front what, of us, bro. That, that's exactly the reason why. I could <laughs> afford for me to sit up there, right? But if I can't afford to put everybody that's coming with me on this trip there, then what is... what Like J. Cole, right? What is first class if my homies can't sit and also too damn brother very good but also too it's like <laughs> very good <laughs> wow but like 
I know, and I'm just, it, I know that you would rather sit with us because then you get to like have a fun time and we get to like watch something together and enjoy our time. And it's, at the end of the day, it's a few hours on a flight and it's kind of a waste of money if like I'm you're five gonna nine. go. I'm swimming in room, okay? <laughs> I you know have what I mean? no problem like, back there. Yeah, if you can swing it, it's not that long of a flight and it's not going to kill your back. And then it's like, you know, who cares? Just also, think about it's Economy like, Plus. It's like six more inches. We do Economy <laughs> Plus. Don't friggin' belittle us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is economy plus. <laughs> that's economy. You know what? Now you're going back to the toilet. <laughs> and by the way, a lot of talk coming from a guy that puts his shooter that's all so the way funny. in the back. That's so funny. David was in the just last like this, row. and he's like, I hate tra- I hate Dude, traveling seeing with him Mike. Was so funny. By the way, he always like in, in Paul. I'm going to call you out, Mike. Now that you're talking about money, <laughs> I, and, and you know, I'm getting David's back because me and David have been tight since I left. So this is for you, David. Uh, <laughs> Mike's the type of dude that will put himself in a penthouse and put David in the hood, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like in the ghetto. <laughs> Bro, I was like, "Yo, bro, put him in a in a like a Hilton or something, bro. Like, what are you doing? Just in the ga- I wouldn't even go to where David was. I was like, David, I can't be there. I'm scared. <laughs> He's like, I know, I don't know why this cheap bastard keeps putting me over. And the they're always complaining, bro. They're always complaining. Every time I see David, I go, David, how is it going? I got to get the hell out of here, bro. I hate Mike. <laughs> and then I say, Mike, I go, Mike, how you doing? He goes, I gotta get a new shooter, bro. This guy's like really killing me. And you think it's a joke on camera? It's not. They they're re- gonna be 80 years old. <laughs> yeah. Same, same thing, bro. Uh, Still just him. living together. Can't get rid of them. Should, should we tell them what happened in the hotel room right before we left? Oh, my God. You want you to wanna tell them? You want to do that? No, you I don't want to tell them. them. What I don't, do you mean? What the You're hell? the one that just brought this up. No, I don't want to tell them, but I realize it's not my fault. It was because of you. Whatever, dude, dude, I would not. Okay, okay. I would not be bringing okay, that up. No, 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 it's no, because no. it's your fault. No, it's okay. your fault. So can I? Can I, I don't know. The- George and I have gone on a lot of trips by ourselves. And never, and never had a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> by the way, never by had the- a problem. Not okay. So speaking of. Uh- Okay, this is... Wait, uh, never mind. I don't want to bring it up anymore. No, 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 no. We're bringing it up because you brought it up. Okay, so I just want to let you know. Not only do we ride uh, together, and not in first class, but (laughs) I always get us... I asked Reed's permission, by the way. Straight up, you could look at him, ask him. I always get us rooms together Mm -hmm. because, like, we're only there for a day. And we literally, at night, we're always hanging out. So we literally watch a movie together. We go to dinners together. We do, like, we went bowling. We just, like, we like to just... Wholesome. We like to hang out together. It's a lot better than... Going to clubs. Yeah, like yeah we used bro. To do. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it feels like a family trip every yeah. time. And it's really fun. And uh, so when she, <laughs> me and him are, are sleeping, he's in his bed. I'm in my bed. And I literally just hear, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This oh my is God. in the morning. We're oh about God, to, oh my God, oh my God. We're, we're leaving in like three hours to our flight. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is my worst This nightmare. is not happening. This, this is, is not this happening. This is my worst nightmare. Oh my God. And then we're like, what? So don't look at me. Don't look at me. And, and like, she's talking through the door of the bathroom. <laughs> talk through the door of the bathroom. And I open it, and there's just overflow of shit water coming no, out of it. Don't say t- it like that. What are you talking about? It was about? water. It was more than water, bro. You don't gotta introduce it that way, because th- then you'll find. Because then you'll find out that it wasn't wow. my fault. It was George's fault. I have a problem with bathrooms, right? Not only do I, I in public bathrooms anywhere, I, I layer the toilet with toilet paper. Like, just layer it. Public bathrooms make sense. But even the hotel. Oh, the hotel? Nice hotel. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Like, they clean that shit. And so they, they, so they put all the toilet paper. And so when I flushed, there was, I remember walking out and looking at it, I'm like... <laughs> I think my toilet paper got stuck in there, but I will deal with it later. And I just went right back to bed. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my Belle god! Bell had a shit storm. <laughs> Stop it, George. <laughs> okay, a tiny little poop. I used the restroom. Okay, you. She used the bathroom, and it's just pouring out, and it's <laughs> flooding into the room. And I'm looking at this girl, and she goes, uh, "This is not happening." This she, is. It was worst. just. It was really. I got to see you guys. And I just like was a fly on the wall. <laughs> you just said that. I was just chilling. But Belle just, you looked so hopeless. You're like, I don't know what to do. And then George comes over. He's like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. We'll deal with this. We'll deal with this. Okay. I'll, Reed, can you call room service? We've got to get somebody up here. It's okay, sweetie. It's it's not that bad. It happens. And it was just so The cleaning cute. people come in. I give them a hundred bucks. I'm like, this, no one knows about this. <laughs> Nobody knows because about this. Because it's literally. My worst nightmare. Like yep. that is like the worst case scenario. It's you know not that's just... when Reed came up to me and he's like, "Do you mind if we get different rooms now?" <laughs> I was like, yeah, "Really?" Like, he's it's like... not just me and George in the room. You know, like poor Reed's. Ba- like this is just so embarrassing. So funny. Oh, 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 oh um, dude! I, I do want to talk about something. Okay. This, this and and this is um, life cycle. Uh, 
sponsors our show now. And before I got this on our show, I, I, I had to do my homework to make sure, like, hey, is this, like, is this okay? Belle's mom was like, this is more than okay. This is amazing, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. So they sent me a few for me to try it. And that's what I love. When a brand sends me stuff to try, just to Good be like, sign. you try it, and then yeah. tell me if you want this on your show. Man, dude. Two days ago. And this is a true story. Yes, I am getting paid, and I am sponsored by the show. But they're not telling me to say this. This is truly how I feel. Uh, I'm in the mirror, and I'm noticing my hair is like... It just looks healthy, also, bro. What is it? What is life? Like, it's it's there are mushroom it, um, supplements. So there's lion mane, lion's mane, turkey tail, reishi, shiitake, chaga, and cordyceps. Got it. And um, they're made as tinctures. So tincture is like kind of like it's like an alcohol, but it's not alcoholic, and it's just so that the tincture helps it get to right into your bloodstream. Turkey tail, for example, this one that I have right here. This is um for your gut, and not to be disgusting, the. The day that I took it, the next day, my bowel movement was different. Mm -hmm. And it was like a good stool, bro. Like a good Solid? stool. Solid? Solid stool. That, can you do that again Solid with Solid stool, bro. And I was like, wow, that's, that shit's real. And, uh, and then so I noticed that my hair's looking really good. So I was like, yo. The I, shiitake. I was like, yo. I called Belle. I was like, Belle, my hair's been. And she's like, yo, it's the shiitake. No shot. And I was like, no way. What and then I noticed my do? nails, my skin is less looking of dry. Like, I'm like, dude, this stuff is actually like. It's not a placebo because mm -hmm. I didn't even I wasn't even thinking about my hair. Mm. I was taking all of it because it's like a routine thing. But I was usually thinking about the gut and then uh, mm. the lion's mane for focus. And you can't fake your bowel movements. You, know? you can't fake no. your bowel movements. <laughs> you just can't. So. As much as you try. <laughs> you can't fake that hey. shit. Damn. Uh, but yeah, no, I wanted to I wanted to bring that up because I don't know if you guys it, it is in the description the link and if you want to uh, try it. True, I would I would if you're. This year was discipline for me, getting myself in the gym, making sure I'm eating clean, like taking the necessary steps into making progress with my body, if it's physical or spiritual, mental. And uh, if you're on that wave and you really want to take that step, do your homework on it first. But if this is something that you looked into and you should dabble in, I, I would really, really try it, bro. It's It has been something that I take that I immediately see results in and that pleases me mm -hmm. because a lot of times I'm like is this helping is this not yeah, helping especially is this a waste of money like is yeah. but this one it was like dang and if you are taking it I would love for you to uh, leave a comment down below and let me know how you're feeling about it because I, I can't be the only one bro yeah. no stuff is I got read great. on it too I got you mm -hmm. on it I got my mm -hmm. mom and dad on it I, I called the company I was like yo I'm down I need you to ship me all this stuff for my friends and family because yeah. nice. I want them to be like healthy with me well when he got offered this I was like what bro because I had done so much research on all the benefits that all these different mushrooms do for you. And so I had already been like, I was like, oh, damn, I want to start like dropping some money to like, you know, get these mushroom supplements because they do so many good things for you. And they have them in like powders and stuff. But what's cool about this one is that it's the tincture and the tincture is just like it goes into your like bloodstream, which is like better, you know, mm -hmm. speaking of discipline, if I may say something that I thought about, I'm going to leave off with something. Mm, what do you think, George? Let me Should think. we let her? Let me think. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, such a polite way of asking. It's so sweet. This is your podcast. It's your show. You you're a co-host, you bro. What are you doing? You don't need nobody's permission. I don't know. So I wanted to bring this up because we touched on discipline a few times, and I know that it's something very prevalent for you right now, and it's something that I truly want to be super spiritually disciplined, something I'm working on very hard. And, well, not work out hard, but something that I just want very badly. And so I actually been reading this book called Disciplines of a Godly Woman. It's by Barbara Hughes. And in right in the very beginning of the book, she kind of just lays out the idea of what it is to be disciplined and to have discipline when it comes to God. And I wanted to share this. I thought it was such a good way of putting it. And she kind of explains that today in our current culture, when people hear that they need to be disciplined by God, they automatically think legalism, right? And they think like, oh, it's, I have to, it's, it, they see it just as legalism. And the true definition of legalism is it's strict, literal, or an excessive conformity to the law. So it kind of, it, legalism restricts your free choice. And that's how people see themselves being disciplined with God. But the difference between legalism and discipline is the motivation that comes behind it. And so she explains it that in a way that legalism is you think that, oh, I'm going to read the Bible every single day because then that way God will love me more. And discipline is 
I'm going to read the Bible every day because I love God and I want to please God and I want to do what's right by him. And I just think that that was such a good idea to like understand because I think that when we hear the idea of like, oh, I need to be disciplined and like learning about God and reading the scripture, we feel like it's a task that we have to do. And that if you don't do it, you'll be in trouble. If you do these things, if you fall and you do something wrong, then that a smack in the hand and that's it. Whereas all it is, is the way that you look at it. And if you can change your motivation behind it and see in the way that it's your heart and it's your relationship with God, then it just changes the idea completely and it becomes something that you want part of your routine and it's something that you exercise in your life. And so that's like the discipline with God versus looking at it in a legalistic type of way, if like that made sense. I wrote it down in so many different ways and it came out a little differently than I wanted it to. No, but that that's but, it, it might have been perfect for somebody to digest. And if I could add to that, mm-hmm. um, I realized when I was reading the scripture, all the people that weren't walking according to what God Christ wanted them to walk into. He never condemned them and he never was like sending them in a bad place. He would just say, okay, well then carry on doing what you're doing. And I think that was his like, that's his punishment. Like he's like, okay, continue to walk towards a deadly route. That's your fault. And when you follow authority, it's mostly for you, not him. When you, when you obey him and you worship him, it's not like he grows into a stronger form of God. He's literally just sent you instructions. And I always joke about this, but Bible to me is basic instructions before leaving earth. He left you a little manual, how to live a prosperous life here. Mm -hmm. So being obedient is not helping him. It's helping you. Yes. And Thank you so much for saying it that way. Those, because sometimes it's hard to explain these things, right? I have it so ironed out, and then it's hard to explain it. But it's exactly that way that if you look at it in a legalistic type of way, <laughs> the word legalist, like every time you say that, it's just so hard to hear. Because I feel like when I hear that, I hear law and rules and well, all this exactly. stuff. Well, yeah. exactly, and that's how people see. They think like, oh, in order to be disciplined, I need. To, they see it that way, yeah. rules and laws, and that will only lead you to spiritual death. Who, who does that remind you of, though? Think about it laws man rules man like that reminds you of that like teenager that's so disobedient to his dad and yeah his mom and, and because he's unwise to know hey man those friends are going to lead you into doing a lot of bad things mm-hmm. but in their pov they're like what did my mom and dad know Bleh. you know like <laughs> forget them they don't live in my generation and they don't live there you know I- i'm glad you brought this up because i i wrote this down with when it comes to my father i go there's two people that are with me in my business It's one, first and foremost, God. Mm -hmm. And the second one is my father. Mm -hmm. And I bring them with me on this industry. And a lot of people, especially when they had dads that supported them in their industry, like in any industry that you're in, your dad supports you. But once you find success in your lane, you're like, well, my father doesn't know. And you're like, well, that's unfair because neither did you, but he was with you and he believed in you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't grow up and become wiser than my father. I grew up to bring my father with me. And I know that I need his counseling. So there was a lot of me humbling myself instead of being arrogant and be like, well, I got the fame and the money. What does my dad know about creating? When it was like, no, my father brought me to be the man that I am today. How about I bring him along this journey? He could even be wiser than me because now he has experience and I'm bringing him what I learned. So then now my father brings me to a better place in life. But it's the same type of aspect. It's like, it's a greedy thing. It's mm-hmm. I, I, I want it. I want it. When God's like, fine, go ahead. If you want to sin, go. Mm-hmm. By all means, go. You have free choice. Take mm-hmm. it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's only going to lead you to so a dark true. place. Mm-hmm. Remember, there was a Bible verse that always got to me. Sin can never go to you. It could come through you. So I'll rephrase that. Sin can never hurt you directly, but it could go through you. So sin doesn't come from an outside. It comes from in, out. Yeah. That's a big thing to think about. Mm. And if you feel like, you know, like, oh, well, I have to make these choices. You're only drawing yourself away from God because then you're feeling like you're obligated to do these things. Whereas if you can change your motivation behind it and like, well, no, I want to do these things. Then you're getting the gifts from God because you're learning his word and that's only going to better your life. And then you're only able to follow his beautiful path that he set out for you. And then that's being able to have godly discipline is that you want to follow him. Reverse engineer it though. Check this out. Mm. A man who's obedient and doesn't want to be obedient and a man who wants to be obedient and is obedient are both obedient people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When I didn't want to forgive and forget, 
But God's like, no, to move on in life, you have to do that. I'm not going to bless you until you fix your heart. Because if I give you everything that you have now with that evil heart, you're going to be a piece of crap. You're not going to be a good person. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I ask God, I go, well, what does a man who wants to forgive do? Because I don't want to forgive. I don't. I'm angry. I want vengeance. And God's like, well, this is how he behaves. So I pretended and I behaved that way, even though my heart did not want to. And I woke up every day and I said good things and I did good things. And I kept walking in the way that he walked. But the best part is when you start walking with God, even though you don't want to walk with God, you're still going to see what he's doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you may have not want to, but now you're like, oh, I wouldn't trade the money in the world to go against God because now I understand it. It's a, it's a pride thing and it's an ego thing. People want God to reveal why they should do it first and mm -hmm. then they'll do it. When God's like, do it first and then you'll be revealed why you should have done that. And I think a lot of blessings are wisdom. And, and, and truly, if you look down at somebody, you're like, well, why is he acting like that? It's because he doesn't have the wisdom to not act like that. So are you, are you really judging him on the thing that God blessed you with? Because that could be removed from you. That's why my mom would always fear me all the time. My mom goes, when I was a kid, she'd always goes, don't, put, don't make God put you in that circumstance for you to realize why that person's acting that way. Mm. And that scared me. Because I would look at somebody and always, we'd always say the same thing, right? Why the beep is this guy doing this? And God's like, well, do you really want me to, you want to know? Okay, I'm going to put you through what he had to go through for him to be this bitter and this sad. Let's see if you would have dealt with it that way. When you look at somebody who's going through a lot and you're like, oh, I would have dealt, I would have dealt with it this way, this way, would you have? Because mm. I know a guy that will put you in that place like that. 100%. Dude, real quick. He'll humble you, bro. Mm. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, of course. Do you have any more to bring up with that? Well, I had this um, kind of this prayer that expresses that relationship beautifully. Oh, and I would love to read it. Um, John Wesley wrote this. He was a theologian in the 1700s. And he wrote, O oh God, fill my soul with so entire a love of thee that I may love nothing but for thy sake and in subordination to thy love. Give me grace to study thy knowledge daily that the more I know thee, the more I may love thee. Create in me a zealous obedience to all thy commands, a cheerful patience under all thy chastisements, and a thankful resignation to all thy disposals. Let it be the one business of my life to glorify thee by every word of my tongue, by every work of my hand, by professing thy truth, and by engaging all men, so far as in me lies, to glorify and love thee. Well, there it is. Jesus. There it is. That's what you were looking for. Damn. Damn we're going to end it there, bro. <laughs> Don't swear, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. 